Can you solve this hard algebra challenge? Here's the question. Given that cube root of 4 minus x squared plus square root of x squared minus 3 equals to 1, then our goal is to solve for the real value of x that satisfies this equation. Now you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. By the way, this algebra challenge appears on an exam and said to be the hardest item on that exam. Now, let's try to answer this algebra challenge. Alright, so to answer this question, what we're going to do is to focus on this term right here, x squared minus 3. And let's replace this with the variable n squared. Now, the question is why n squared? If we replace n squared to x squared minus 3, so we have square root of n squared, so this term becomes just n. Alright? Now, let's continue. We know n squared equals x squared minus 3. So now, we need to rewrite 4 minus x squared in terms of n. So we can replace 4 minus x squared in terms of n. So to do that, what we're going to do is to subtract 1 on both sides. So we have n squared minus 1 equals x squared minus 3 minus 1 because negative 3 minus 1 is simply equal to negative 4. Now, if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we have negative of n squared minus 1 equals negative of x squared minus 4. Now, let's distribute this negative sign to n squared minus 1. So, this will give us a value of negative n squared plus 1. Also, let's distribute this negative sign to x squared minus 4. So, again, this will give us negative x squared plus 4. Now, rearrange some terms a little bit. We have now 1 minus n squared, and it must be equal to 4 minus x squared. This is what we want. So 4 minus x squared can be written as 1 minus n squared. Now let's simplify this original equation. So we said that x squared minus 3 must be equal to n squared. So this term right here is just n. And 4 minus x squared, we know that this is equivalent to 1 minus n squared. And now, let's focus on this new equation in terms of n. But again, by the way, let's take note that n squared must be equal to x squared minus 3. Alright, now let's solve for the value of n. What we're going to do is to subtract n on both sides. So we have now cube root of 1 minus n squared equals 1 minus n. Now, to eliminate this cube root, what we're going to do is to cube on both sides. Because cube root and cube cancel each other. So the left-hand side of our equation is just 1 minus n squared. And on the right-hand side, we can simplify this. 1 minus n raised to the third power, we will use this identity. If we have x minus y raised to 3, it must be equal to x cubed minus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared minus y cubed. Now here, x is simply equal to 1 and y must be equal to just n. Now if we simplify this, the right hand side is simply equivalent to 1 minus 3n plus 3n squared minus n cubed. Now let's simplify more. Let's subtract 1 on both sides. So this one cancel out. This becomes 0. And then let's add n squared on both sides. If we do that, we have now 0 on the left equals negative 3n plus 4n squared minus n cubed. Now what we're going to do is to move all of these terms to the other side to make the numerical coefficient of n cubed be a positive number. If we do that, we get n cubed minus 4n squared plus 3n equals 0. Now, we are now ready to solve for the value of n. We have n on these three terms, so we can factor out n. This will give us n multiplied by n squared minus 4n plus 3. Now, this negative 4 is simply equal to negative 1 plus negative 3. 
and negative 1 times negative 3 becomes positive 3. So n squared minus 4 n plus 3 can be factored as n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 3. So we can replace this n squared minus 4 n plus 3 using its factored form as n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 3, like this. Now, since the left-hand side, n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 3 equals to 0, it follows that at least one of them must be equal to 0, or simply the 0 property. So, we can say that n equals to 0, n minus 1 equals to 0, n minus 3 equal to 0. So, we have the first value of n, which is equal to 0. Now, how about the second value of n? Let's add 1 on both sides, and we get that the value of n must be equal to just positive 1. Now, the third value of x, let's add 3 on both sides, we get that the value of n must be equal to positive 3. Now, we have three cases. We have n equals to 0, n equals 1, and n equals 3. We are now ready to solve for the value of x. Because we know that n squared equals x squared minus 3. So, let's use this. Let's have the first case, wherein n equals to 0. So, let's replace this n be equal to 0. We have 0 squared equals x squared minus 3. And 0 squared, we know this is just 0. So, now, let's add 3 on both sides. So, we have 3 equals x squared. Now, to get the value of x, let's get the square root on both sides. Since the exponent of x is an even, so we have two possible values here. We have positive or negative square root of 3. Now, the right-hand side is just x. So, we have now two possible values for x. We have positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. So, this is what we get in case number 1. Now, how about in case number 3, wherein n equals to 3? So, we have now n squared equals x squared minus 3 again. And we need to replace this n with 3 because n equals to 3 on the third case. So, we have 3 squared equals x squared minus 3. Now, 3 squared, this is just 9. Now, let's solve for the value of x. Let's add 3 on both sides. So, 9 plus 3 is 12. Then, get the square root on both sides. Again, we have two possible values here. We have positive or negative square root of 12. Now, positive or negative square root of 12, this square root of 12 can be simplified to 2 multiplied by its square root of 3. And the right-hand side is just x. So again, we found another 2 result for the value of x. We have positive or negative 2 multiplied by the square root of 3. And now, for the last case, what is the value of x when n equals 1? So we replace this n with 1. So we have 1 squared equals x squared minus 3. 1 squared is just 1. And add 3 on both sides. We have 1 plus 3 must be equal to 4. Again, let's get the square root on both sides, and take note we have two possible values here. We have positive or negative square root of 4, and we know square root of 4 is simply equal to 2. And on the right-hand side, is simply equal to x. Therefore, we have six possible values for x. We have positive or negative square root of 3, positive or negative 2, and positive or negative 2 times square root of x. Whew. So, the question now is, is these six values for x is the solution to this equation? So, what we're going to do is to check all of these values. The easiest way to do that is to get the x squared from these three cases. Now, if we do that, we have x squared equals to 3 on the first case x squared equals to 4 on the second case, x squared equals to 12 on the third case. Now, let's check all of these cases. Let's start with if x squared equals to 3. Alright, so 4 minus 3 because x squared equals to 3 plus this x squared is 3 minus 3 equals to 1. Let's see if this is true. Now, cube root of 4 minus 3, cube root of 1 is just 1 plus Square root of 3 minus 3, which is 0, square root of 0 is 0, so 1 plus 0 is simply equal to 1. Therefore, x equals positive or negative square root of 3 is part of our solution. Now, let's have 
positive or negative 2. We know x squared equals to 4 because positive 2 squared will give us 4. Negative 2 quantity squared is also equal to 4. So in both cases, x squared must be equal to 4. Now let's see if this value satisfies the given equation. So now we know that x squared equals 4. All right. Now, what is cube root of 4 minus 4? This is cube root of 0. So, cube root of 0 must be equal to 0. Plus, square root of 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is just 1. So, square root of 1 is just 1. And 0 plus 1 is simply equal to 1. Therefore, positive or negative 2 is also part of our solution. So, we have now 4 in total. Positive or negative 2 and positive or negative square root of 3. Now, how about the last one? So, let's see. What if x squared equals 12? So, now, if x squared equals to 12, and this x squared equals to 12. Now, what is the value of cube root of 4 minus 12? Now, we have now cube root of 4 minus 12 will give us negative 8. Now, we know Cube root of negative 8 is simply equal to negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 or negative 2 raised to the third power will give us negative 8. So, cube root of negative 8 is simply equal to negative 2. Alright. Plus, 12 minus 3 is just 9 and the square root of 9 will give us a value of 3. Now, negative 2 plus 3 again will give us a value of 1. Therefore, positive or negative 2 times square root of 3 also satisfies this equation. Therefore, our answer to this question, what is the real value of x that satisfies this equation, cube root of 4 minus x squared plus square root of x squared minus 3 equals 1, and our answer is x equals to positive or negative square root of 3, or positive or negative 2 or positive or negative 2 times square root of 3. And as always, we are done.